Okay, so today we want to look at utility classes, which have kind of really grown in popularity in recent years, and the tailwind being the main one. And it's a slightly different paradigm of approaching CSS versus naming conventions, which we looked at in a previous video. Basically, the old uh, functional versus object oriented has made its way into CSS somehow. And I guess that's inevitable given the trends in React at the moment. Basically, to recap that, quickly in case anyone's not really from a programming background you could approach your your website in two different ways you could look at it as a series of units of components and lumps on a page and you make these kind of uh, scoped units of, of functionality or you just make a series of you know loose functions so if I do some kind of quick pseudocode if we've got um, a form on the page I kind of could make my you know class form and then I'll have properties on it, so it'll be like this, you know, first name, and then this um, email, and this, you know, whatever. And then you have functions in there, they'll be like, I have validate email, and then you might have a function for um, validate name, and then you'll have a submit function. And the point is that all this stuff is grouped together. You make a, a big block of the, the form component and that might have styles attached to it and that might have um, a template, might have a, a, a reusability in that you know you could add multiple forms or you could use this form in different parts of your application. But all those properties come with it and all those methods come with it. They're one big block and you could even extend that and like inherit from it to make a different form. But your point is you're kind of dragging this chain around with you that might be useful for what you're trying to do and it might be a great way of visualizing things you scope things but the problem then is is obviously just that potential bloat I guess and that you're unnecessarily chaining things and creating more complexity the alternative is you just make a bunch of functions so instead of having any concept of a form component you just have a function which is like validate email and then you have a, a submit function which doesn't necessarily have to submit a form it just takes some values and sends a post of some kind and you can have a you know uh, form entered you know just a series of functions and they're completely unrelated to each other they're completely free they're probably simpler to read they're easier to test and they could be chained together in different combinations maybe easier to debug and easier to solve um, but they're completely ungrouped so that there's kind of the trade-off there and in programming this seems to be the direction at the moment that react went from being very component based to being uh, much more functional with the hooks and all those things so uh that's that in css you wouldn't really think it relates but the idea is this in, in css traditionally you would try and make a bunch of styles which would sit with one uh section so you know bem is about block element modifier you're defining a block so in the past we would add a a style which would be like a header and that would have a, a background and it would have a font uh, size and it would have a, a color and also within it you'd have a, a heading and that would have its own uh, color and that would have its own margin and that would have its own properties and then you might have uh, paragraphs within that and then you would have uh, you know some general padding and then you would have I don't know some icons and again the idea is you've made this big block you might want to use multiple headers you might have headers in different places you might use that class and then use other classes with it to overwrite some of those styles but you're kind of creating these scopable chains and the idea is you can uh, group styles together because that kind of tells a story about what that page looks like or what that section of a page looks like Instead, what you're doing now is shifting it. So you would make a div, and in the classes, instead you're going to kind of give it like um, bg dash black, and then you know color dash green. It's going to look awful. And then margin ten, and then padding twenty five, and then uh, you know font size. You know, might be large. And you're making this long, long chain of classes. Whereas in the past, you used to just give it a class of head, and now you're giving it 50 classes. And people can look and they can read through and make sense of all the styles that are approached to that thing. So, again, that shift from having these kind of big units to kind of small sections. We could talk about performance. It could be that by having hundreds of little classes that just do one thing, you do create a code bloat. Or maybe not. Maybe because you've created so, um, so, um, 
low level styles it means that you can reuse them massively and you don't create hundreds and hundreds of these big blocks of code which define the same classes and the same styles over and over again um, it could be they're more readable uh, and it means you, you don't kind of get into this sense of having a, a big um, design language built into your CSS because you're just reusing lots of, of many things and, and it kind of becomes a semantic way of understanding something. It's probably a lot easier to get started with a project in this way because once you understand the, the basic settings, you can just throw these into things. But the thing is that's really all you're doing and what I've demonstrated there is you shifted a bunch of style settings that were defined in CSS and moved them into HTML. That is to say that you're now describing what a page looks like in the HTML. You're, you're adding all your style settings in HTML rather than in CSS. It kind of suggests you're not really going to work in CSS at all anymore because that can just be tucked away in your utility library and you're just really going to write all your styles into HTML and possibly create quite long chains of, of classes. And you have to think about how that would play out in a project going forward. Say, for instance, you have a your new intern comes in and they're going to work on your project which has now been running for a few years and is using using these utility classes everywhere the first you know task you might give them is to uh, change a, a font weight on a on a particular part of text traditionally the way you might do that if, if you're not familiar with the code base you might use the uh, dom inspector you find out what that element is you look at what its class is, then you can just search in the code base. You could find in the CSS file where that class is. You could look at where the font weight is. The font weight is set to you know 500. You need to change it to 600. You make that change in one place. You push up that change because you're quite confident that that class exists in one place and you've changed that one thing and it's not going to affect anything else. And even if it is used in another place, you want those to be grouped together because they're using the same class. It all kind of makes sense. Now imagine that you're using this utility system. You can use the DOM inspector, you'll find the element, and you'll find that it's using a class, which, well, it's using hundreds of classes. You now need to find which of those classes specifies the font weight. Maybe they have one which says like font-w700, and you think that's probably font weight 700. But there's a chance you're, you're not completely sure. Uh, maybe it doesn't have one, and, and the font weight is actually inherited from uh, some sort of generic class which is like font big or font medium and and that contains a size as well as a weight so you're gonna have to go look at some documentation of some like third party thing read through and work out what thing is uh, giving it its font weight if there isn't one there you might find what the default is uh, now your change are you adding a new utility class or are you removing one that exists there uh, it just probably involves a little bit more of a kind of learning curve for that person to, to work with the new utility libraries. They also are never going to go to the CSS to make a change, but they might do by accident because they're used to working in CSS in that way. So they need to make a change, so they add a class, then they go to a CSS file and they add a setting there, and they don't realize they've actually overwritten a utility library you've been working on because of they're not familiar with it. So... <laughs> you potentially make it harder for newer people to uh, find the elements they're styling, consult what things they need to change and make sensible um, decisions about how to fix problems. And maybe that just comes with how you get used to this setup and maybe it just involves some education within your development team. You might have to think about how many people work on this code and how much of a, a barrier is this going to be to making it easy for people to work on. You know, you think about inadvertent uh, errors along the way how often is uh, extra code going to creep in if somebody did decide to um, just select a whole bunch of these utility classes and then write their own override so down here I decide to do a kind of font large dot font uh, 700 dot uh, font uh, size you know 20 I just kind of use the selectors to just group a bunch of those and add like color red it's a terrible way of doing it but i don't know if anyone would ever be able to work out how this bug is created because you you would just see that they're using the same utility classes everywhere else and for some reason this text has gone red so you possibly create a bit of a kind of murky avenue there that is not to say that it's a bad idea i think there are lots of applications where this kind of system could work really well. I think it just involves possibly a good buy-in from everybody using your CSS 
uh, a good understanding and a good uh, documentation of exactly what the classes are and how they're all easy to work with. But that's not to, to rule out a kind of traditional way of writing a, a, a structured one. Like a lot of programming premises, I guess it just comes down to preference, how people kind of visualize code or how people feel about the way you write code. Um, often people just start with one and when they get comfortable, they then become resistant to any new things. Um, but I could sort of send you the appeal of either and um, be interesting to see kind of which becomes more of a trend as, as uh, time goes on. Anyway, that's my view. I'd really like to get some feedback though. Let me know in the, the comments and uh, do subscribe for any future stuff. Cheers. <laughs>